We're here to answer your gaming and game night questions, working with you to make your game nights better. Tonight, the plan is to answer questions from the lobby, our chat room here on Twitch, and we really have no idea where this is going to go. The last time we did this, we spent the entire episode talking about the intersection between video games and board games. Which I invite you to check out that discussion. It was back on episode 210 of the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. Live board game Q&A. Um, done before I realized we should name our Q&A episodes after the fact, which is what we're going to do tonight. So while we're waiting for some questions from the chat, here's one from our question pile to get things started. All right, this one comes from local game designer, patron of the show, Roger Malott. Roger writes, Hey Mo, I was reminded of one of my favorite movies, Memento, recently. It starts at the ending and works backwards to the beginning, resulting in one of the best aha moments I've seen in film. I was just wondering if anyone has made a game based on this concept. It would start with a situation like a knight fighting a giant raccoon with a sword of fire wearing nothing but his long underwear. <laughs> the player would then construct a backstory to explain exactly how he got into that situation and how these strange items came about. This sounds like an RPG game, which is more yeah. in your realm of expertise. A cool name for this game would be Backstory. What are, are your thoughts yet? Has this been done yet? Oh, I was really hoping we were going to get Mr. Jeff Seuss in the chat room tonight for this one to help us out. Because uh, Mr. Seuss is the master of the story game RPG, the, the as I like to call them, uh, indie hippie games. <laughs> to no offense to hippies or indie game designers. It's just, you know what I mean. Um, past the stick role playing. This is definitely his wheelhouse. And I have to say, there's got to be something, is, is, is my first thought. Like, like this just sounds... Like the the designer of Fiasco, like Jason Morningstar came up with this, right? Like that style of game. It, it's got to exist. Now, I will say I've never seen Memento. So honestly, I keep meaning to watch it because Roger's question has been sitting in our pile for a while because it wasn't something long enough, I think, to dedicate a full episode to. And But I get the concept. Like, I understand. Now, what I'm not sure, and maybe Sean can help this, is how is this different? from a flashback episode of a serial, right? Where you've got the Star Trek episode, you turn it on and the Enterprise is on fire and you see Uhura gets stabbed and like Scotty falls out an airlock or something. And then it says, you know, 38 days ago and it jumps back and tells you like, how is that different than Memento? All right. Well, I've never actually been able to bring myself to watch this movie, but I do understand <laughs> the concept. I'm just not actually a Christopher Nolan fan. So I would expect to find this sort of game on Itch.io as a solo journaling game, honestly. But a quick search yesterday didn't manage to turn one up. But that's not to say there isn't one there already. Um, really, Memento is about um, a character who has lost the ability to create new memories. Um, okay. So when they start off, some time has passed from a certain event the last event they can remember and they need to work out what has happened since that event uh, without being able mm. to remember anything new either. Like they're, they're, they're goldfish. Um, they cannot create new memories. Um, and that's, that, that's sort of the, the, the concept behind right. it all. And it's a detective story, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So that is a little different than the, what Roger described to me reminds me more of the flashback episode, which, which I have to say, I hate, I absolutely <laughs> hate. TV series with flashback episodes. I hate those. Boom. <laughs> Three weeks ago. I, yeah. So I, I mean, uh, like to, to play a flashback episode in RPG is pretty simple, right? You start right. off with a conceit and then you go back to you go back and the get beginning of the game and play until you get to that point. Right. Whereas Which this I've one, seen. you're actually trying to figure out all the bits that happened backwards rather than forwards. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cause I was going to say, I've definitely seen the flashback done. That yes, here's your conceit. That's your RPG thing. You sit down with your group and you decide we're getting to this point. Everything you do has to work towards that point. Anything else you want to do in the middle goes, right? That's very much a story game right there. And I'm certain there are versions of that. Um, now, I'm going to start with board games since I know I'm calling this an RPG. But I did. I do think some of the time travel ones kind of do this, but specifically Tragedy Looper. Though the very beginning premise doesn't work. Based on that. So in Tragedy Looper, you set up a board and it's different people are at different locations on the board. And the first round of play, the players basically just interact with what's going on. They just kind of walk around and check out the scene. And then something horrible happens. 
And then it's trying to go backwards to figure out what caused that horrible thing to happen and stop it. So you end up playing through a second time and then you find out, well, the only reason it happened is because Jimmy was in the school. Now this is an Asian game and Jimmy is definitely not a character name <laughs> in it. It's very much an anime game. I, but I'm just, I haven't played Tragedy Looper in long enough. So then you're like, okay, Jimmy had to be in the school for him to die. So if we stop Jimmy from going to the school, but it's not that there's more to it. It's more like, why was Jimmy in the school? Cause you won't be able to stop Jimmy going to the school. But if you can find out Jimmy went to the school because he broke up with his girlfriend and he's depressed. Well, then you can go and you try to stop the breakup. Well, that didn't work. Why did he break up for his girlfriend? So I think you get some of that with Tragedy Looper. Yeah, there's, the there's an aspect of it. But I, I can I can really think of that gets any of it. And it definitely doesn't have. So Roger's clarifying. But Roger is in the chat tonight. So that's awesome. Um, He's using tattoos and photographs to record his past. I can't think of any game that uses anything like that. Yeah. So, I mean, essentially, you, you'd need to, uh, again, as you're trying, as you figure things out, if you don't record them, you'd lose them. Uh, because again, yeah, he doesn't have, a, he doesn't have a memory. It's a, it's like it, you that's, said, that, that sounds like a journaling RPG. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think it, more than again, anything, itchio, it's gotta be there. RPG. solo, solo itchio. It's gotta be there somewhere. Uh, yeah, someone's done this. Cause I noticed you, you did have, uh, you did a little research yeah, so and I, I looked at I that did link. Call out, I did call out one. So there's a game call up from James West called the pool, which is a very narrative, uh, bizarre, spend things to do things kind of rpg well someone has done a version called snowball where things are snowballing and i saw that recommended for people who want a momentum like experience now i've got to say i am not jeff seuss so reading through the pool of blog posts trying to explain mechanically how this works was um a little tldr for me <laughs> and i'm like all right i'm just gonna throw it out there so if anyone wants to look up the snowball variant of james v west the pool that might give you something what you want. And we'll toss, I'll toss a link to that in the chat room right now. If Roger is more willing to take the time to read through indie game designer speech to, uh, this, this is very, this is there. very hipster indie game designer speech though. Yes. Reading it was it, painful. It's up there. Yes. Um, um, the other one that came up was in media res, which is a one shot, but it's from an old Cthulhu magazine. For Call of Cthulhu and Cthulhu-like games is an old magazine, old zine that no longer exists called Unspeakable Oath. And issue number 10 in 1993 featured a game called In Media Res, but it does what I was talking about. It does the boom, something happened. Uh, in that case, actually, you're you're you like wake up and you're in an asylum and someone's dead and you don't know if you did it or you didn't. And you need to play back to find out what happened. But again, I don't it doesn't have that memory aspect. I think it's just you're basically playing a flashback. Yeah. It's 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 you're starting in media res and then doing the how did we get to this point? Fair enough. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting thing. And, and yeah, I, I mean, going out of itch.io, checking out the journaling RPGs, uh, I feel like it really has to be in there somewhere. Uh, that, that feels like the most likely candidate yeah, for like that. I, I'm kind of surprised that that when I did Google this, I didn't find anything blatantly like just seemed like it should be out there. Like, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm like, I, I say, I, I want to. It is a well loved movie. It's it's again, it's not for me. I'm not a Nolan fan, but there are a lot of Nolan fans out there. Uh, so I was surprised as well. All right, does that help at all, Ryan? At least I, I gave <laughs> you a link to the if you want to dive into um. The Forge style indie RPG development brain. Um, there is a link there for you in the chat room, which I will, of course, throw in the show notes. And again, I'm not I'm not trying to like bash on indie game designers. That that is a, a very interesting brain space. I know a lot of people who write games who came out of the Forge, and some fantastic games came out of the Forge. But it kind of breaks my uh, breaks my <laughs> trad gamer brain to go through some of this stuff. Um, Epidias boxes is another one. I just, I can't, I'm like, maybe if we're sitting at a coffee shop and you showed me with, with, with plates and salt shakers, I might get it, but reading the blogs, I'm lost. Fair enough. Well, uh, because this is a Q and a episode, we let our, our guests ask us anything. We got a question from the chat yep. from Ryan who asks, what is your favorite meat and your favorite dish to have it in? Hmm. I am going to have to go with uh, pork and or veal. Oh, it's close. <laughs> I, I, oh, I can't decide. I can't decide between pork or veal schnitzel because I'm going to go with pork schnitzel and not just because that's what I had. 
uh, about an hour before <laughs> we went live tonight. Um, one of my absolute favorite dishes of all time is a really good wiener schnitzel, which is a pork schnitzel. Sorry, wiener schnitzel would be veal. Is is a really good wiener schnitzel, but I haven't had a really good wiener schnitzel since the rat's color closed in Windsor. So the equivalent has been pork schnitzel, and oh my god, the high mat has a fantastic pork schnitzel. Now I may still prefer Wiener Schnitzel, but it's been so long since I've had it that I don't actually know if I prefer it to the pork because it's just nowhere locally sells it. Um, so between those two, that would probably be my favorite meat. Um, veal, uh, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, no, I'm gonna go back to veal <laughs> just because uh, one of my other favorite dishes is a good uh, veal parmesan. And even more so, again, hasn't existed in years. Trevi Pizza here in Windsor used to have a lasagna where you get slices of veal schnitzel in, or not veal schnitzel, um, veal parm in the lasagna. Oh, that was amazing. Like, absolutely amazing. Fair enough. Uh, I tend to be a little more uh, purist, I guess, uh, would, would be one way to say it. Uh, so I am, uh, you know, I'm going to say beef, and yep. it is uh, prime rib. Uh, I I don't think yes. you can beat a prime rib. Uh, a a well cooked good prime rib is just. I mean, it should melt on your tongue. Uh, just you know, I've and I've had them. Uh, I've I've had some some fantastic you know super expensive steakhouse ones, and I love cooking a prime rib when I can actually afford to cook a prime rib, mm -hmm. which is always the problem, of course. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's really tough to beat a, a, a nice uh, nice chunk of cow. <laughs> See, I know Deanna would agree with you. She loves prime rib. I am not a fan. No, I, I if I'm doing beef, I'd rather have a good New York strip. Mm, fair enough. Which is the cheapest. So <laughs> <laughs> most flavorful, I find. I don't know. I need it well seasoned, though. There well you go. Seasoned. All right. Uh, so jumping back into the chat again, Darkling Blight asks, with the surprise popularity, and I, I, I kind of question that yeah, one. Yeah, I'm not sure about surprise. <laughs> With the surprise popularity of Baldur's Gate 3 um, and, you know, millions of dollars in pre-sales in video games recently, any other role-play settings you would like to see get attention on the video game side? Now, what I would absolutely love to see? Feng Shui. Give me Feng Shui. Give me a who video game. Like, uh, does anyone remember any more one of the early, I think it was um, Bioware, Jade Empire on the Xbox? I adored that RPG. That was a fantastic game. Um, probably has some cultural sensitivity issues. Maybe not. Um, it was a long time ago when I played it. But like, like Feng Shui, if people know it, like the whole Shadow Fist system with the multiple timelines and Feng Shui sites and being able to jump through the different time periods and... Having, um, what do they call them, uh, where you can have the shifts, where time, you go back in the past and you take over. If if one faction owns enough Feng Shui sites, it actually changes the future. And in today's reality, the only reason we don't have magic is because the magic clans don't own enough Feng Shui sites in the past anymore because the futurists went to the past and just burned them all, right? Like, I adore that game setting, and I love Who movies. I, I adore all types and one of the things that i loved about that game it was robin laws trying to be able to make one rpg that handled all types of asian cinema so you have the um i don't even know early dynasty movies with the you know the peasant revival with the couple of brave heroes the um seven samurai but also be able to have um, Big Trouble in Little China, set in modern time because there happens to be a Feng Shui site in Little China, and that's why magic works, but only there. And also have the weird sci-fi things and then the weird messed up stuff like eunuch sorcerers and hopping vampires and have it all work in one game. And I adore Feng Shui. I, I, I is just such an amazing setting. The Shadow Fist, I should be calling it Shadow Fist because the Shadow Fist setting, I think, would be amazing in a video game. And I think the video game wouldn't be Baldur's Gate. It wouldn't be trying to recreate the mechanics of Feng Shui, but the universe of it. Fair enough. Um, I, I honestly, I can't. Uh, my, my brain keeps going the other way uh, because I keep wondering, why has no one done a licensed Diablo RPG? The world of one. Diablo. Is there it's one? It's done. Is there? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I missed that one then. Yep. 
uh, unfortunately, it uses a certain D20 system. Uh, of course it does. So it's not a real... Uh, yeah, so I don't <laughs> count that then. That doesn't count. Uh, no, it's, Give it's me a, a real RPG book. game based... I, I don't want a hack and slash. Like, I mean, I realize that oh, that's what I, the game Diablo? Diablo is. How do you not have it? Because Diablo has a really rich world. Like, the story going on around your characters who happen to be hacking and slashing through demons is fantastic. There's a lot there to be the people outside of the hero who's going through slashing. Um, yeah, they're, they're darkening light. The floor lore goes deep. I haven't even played D4 yet. Even just Ds1 through 3, there's a lot there. Um, you know, your, your characters could be hunting to try and find what caused the cow level. Uh, um, the cow level. So, uh, yeah, I don't, so, yeah, I never yeah. dived that much into it. Yeah, no, there, there's a lot there. And, and unfortunately, there's no, I mean, you don't need an RPG to just hack and slash through a bunch of monsters. You know, you don't need. Yeah, that. that's right. That's kind of what I was like. Oh, don't you kind of have that? Yeah, no, I what, would what much I rather be the, the, the merchants and the citizens in the world uh, around Diablo. Uh, so it came out in 2000 and it was Diablo 2 Diablery. And it was D20 based using D&D third edition rules. Oh, wow. Set in the <laughs> sanctuary system. Well, sanctuary is a location. That's where yeah, Diablo yeah. is set. Yeah, yeah. I swear there was another one, but I'm, I'm failing at finding the second one. There was the D and oh, there was also the Dungeons and Dragons adventure game Diablo two edition. So that's what it was for. Okay. So it was actually an edition of D and D, and it was a quick start. So kind of like the um, Stranger Things D and D starter right. set. But you would love this. This was for second edition D and D. Oh, so I could play it. <laughs> so you could play it. A D and D second edition Dungeons and Dragons Diablo two adventure game sorry oh. dungeon dragons adventure game diablo 2 edition oh that might actually be one to go on my shelf if i can find it out yeah, of, if i can find that at a reasonable price yeah and i've seen them at store shelves nor i saw it like a babbage's right as well diablo yeah. right which goes oh. back to babbage's was awesome yeah that's all rough. right i'm gonna i'm gonna throw in a different one. Oh, so wait what are we trying to get we're trying to get a video game based on popular of all playing, playing things scenes. you would like to see get attention oh, okay. on the video Never game mind. side no, oh, no, that's the opposite of what I was just thinking of. <laughs> um, next would be Tales from the Loop. But uh, technically, I guess that goes back to Simon Stallenhog's art. But like, would yeah, a Tales from the be, Loop game not be awesome? I don't know. That'd be interesting. I feel like, see, a lot I of the games by, I, I leap to, I'm like, oh, this would be, oh, wait, wouldn't that be more of a digital novel or novel experience than an actual game? Oh, um, no, like th think Fallout 4 or 3 in my brain. But set in the sweetest loop, and you play a kid, Possibly. like like yeah. let you explore. Hmm? Yeah, no, I can see that. Yeah, that works. That's what uh, I'm thinking, right? Like that style. Follow three, whatever. You you you. The game starts. You you're you're in class. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a normal day. Something happens. So you here, could go gonna, that way, or you could go explore. I'm gonna go with one of the friends of the friends of the show. Why don't we get a Hydro Hackers based like cyberpunk game? You know, like they take the cyberpunk engine, but put it into the Hydro Hackers world, fighting for the water, fighting against yeah. the man. I, I, I think because the person who wrote Hydro Hackers would rather they use a system <laughs> other than cyberpunk. No, no, I'm not, not, not as like, I'm, but I'm thinking of like, there is the game cyberpunk, that kind of right. a video game. Oh, like the video game cyberpunk. Yeah, yeah, cyberpunk. the video game okay. cyberpunk. Like a, like a mod for cyberpunk yeah, yeah. for yeah, yeah. H2O. Yeah, yeah, that that style of video game. And you've got the cyberpunk uh, 2045 video, or is it 2045? Um, video I don't game know, that 2077, came out. isn't it? Uh, I don't Something? know. I never played it. Uh, yeah, but you take, you take that, um, but, you know, just use that sort of style of game. You know, it, it's, a, it's an ongoing uh, detective style game, uh, but you put it into... Mm -hmm you know, the hydro hackers world instead of the cyberpunk world. Oh, I, th I think, I think Phil's hydro hacker setting is fantastic. I mm -hmm. really do. Absolutely. Unfortunately, it seems Phil has given up on hydro hackers and it's never going to get past Nash can. So that part kind of sucks. Um, now the other, our other friend of the show that I, I could see uh, and, and who has branched out into a wide variety would be Tracy and their, um, yeah, Interesting Iron Etta, Iron Etta uh, format. I mean, they have already yeah. gone to a, a number of different places with their setting. Uh, a video game would be another possibility, although I I mm -hmm. don't think they have that on their I'd roadmap. Want out of that. 
I think an Iron Edda, I would want something like Hades. That you're some Norse person who's cursed to keep resurrecting mm-hmm. until something's fixed. And and like the battling the 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 giants, everything, right? Oh, yeah. Like yeah, you're yeah. bone bonded, but you're there's something else special where you can't die. And, and it yeah. sucks. Like you're yeah. not happy about it. <laughs> one of one of the one of the final levels would be that, you know, that that bone bound versus uh right. dwarven versus mecha. The dwarven destroyer. Yeah. I could totally see that. Yeah, absolutely. Role playing settings and, and oh, I'm downstairs. I can look around. <laughs> Masters of the Universe. That's a role playing setting, right there. No, yeah, but do Joe, we want video games of that? I don't think we want Gamma video World. Games. There's a good one. Gamma World. So I guess no, that's not fall. I, I want Gonzo Gamma World. How is there not a Gamma World RPG? Surely mm-hmm. there's got to be a Gamma World PC game that's not called Gamma World. Some <laughs> old groundyard has been playing Gamma World for years, made a PC game. There, there must be. I would love to see a Gamma World. Um, uh, I still want to see a good superhero game done on a PC. I don't. I don't think it can be done. <laughs> Freedom Force was the last one I remember enjoying. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, there was a game Battle called Fest Gamma World uh, on for the PC. Uh, I wonder if it's based on Gamma World. In the fall of 2012, scientists at the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva, Switzerland, embarked on a new series of high-energy experiments. Yeah, the big that's, mistake. Yeah, that's Gamma World. Mm-hmm. So it has been done. All right. I need a modern one. And, and for the... Oh, the you know elves. what? It was an Atari game, but it never actually got released. Oh, there you go. There we go. That's the problem. So it was... It was so that's why. It was announced, but it was can, it was and announced and then canceled before release. All right. There we go. That's... Uh, uh, for, for, for the elves with cyber deck loving fans, Shadowrun. But that's been done. That's right. There's like yep. five. I kickstarted them and i haven't played any of them <laughs> never mind never mind and there is a parano- there's even a paranoia one already yeah i played it i've got it we reviewed it we have a review of the yep. paranoia role-playing game. I, yeah darkling blight points out dc universe online is still going on somewhere or somehow yeah, it's, it's, i played it's it for a while it was interesting to start but again my big problem is i never end up connecting with groups and yeah. all of those mmos stink of as first as single player, mm-hmm. once you get past your, you know, the initial startup, you know, you get through the, the, the on rails portion. And then if yep. you don't have a team, if you don't have a squad, it's utterly pointless. And that was my problem with DC. If I'd had a yep. squad, I would probably have still been playing these. I, I sat down when we first got the Xbox. Um, yeah, and I, I'm like, Oh, this Xbox. is cool. And I jumped in and I yep. loved it. And then it was like, Oh, well, what do I do now? Oh, I wander around and, and, get people you know thumbing their nose at me so <laughs> i was huge into city of hero city of villains until it went down well it's still I going, like though. a solo the one though well, like city with of a good hero, story. city of villains is still going um, not officially no no it's, it's all the users, but the users have completely yes the users have up. a version i tried it the, unfortunately the users are keeping it looking and playing like it did oh, yeah. instead of trying to improve it at all i get it if if you're a fan sure uh, there is um, someone working on a, a new version with new graphics and new, um, okay. new stuff. I actually backed it on, uh, I don't even, it wasn't even Kickstarter. It was somewhere else I backed it. Right. Um, and I'm trying to remember the name as I scroll rapidly through my Windows, um, uh, my Windows menu. Cause I don't no, actually, I want, I like, I want something like Freedom Force, right? Like I, I want a solo, like I, I want a Baldur's Gate three. I want it. Well, I know it's Baldur's Gate three. You can team up with other people. I don't want an MMO. I want a superhero PC game. Yep. Give me cyberpunk 27, seven, make it superheroes. Yep. That's fair. Heck it can be very Baldur's Gate three. Give me a team. Let <laughs> me play the Freedom Force, right? Give me, give me a modern Freedom Force. I'd probably be happy. Yeah, like if we're saying good, based yeah. on RPGs, like heck, whatever, Marvel, DC, I don't care. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, I want a Sentinels of the Multiverse, like a, or sorry, whatever the Sentinels RPG is called. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. We got uh, text yeah, asking I, where I'm, we I'm could sure get a others. mug. Where? Where I, is there where anywhere you, you could mug? get a mug? Well, I can give you a chance at getting a mug at tabletopbellhop.com. Just click on the big thing that says "Win a Mug." There we go. Doesn't quite say that, but it's pretty close. I have no idea. No, I'm still I... saying my my main one though. Like if I had to pick one out of all those, still Feng Shui. I would love to see. I, I don't know how Feng Shui though. Tales from the Loop's really close. Tales from the Loop done by Bethesda, like like Fallout level of quality. 
Right. But make it in the, and give me the Swedish one. It doesn't have to be in the States. Just give me the Swedish one. Boom. Dump me in. Give me a huge flipping world. Let me go find a secret passage on the side and go start exploring under the loop. You know, let me find the, the cave that suddenly sends me back to prehistoric time. Like, like, give me all of it. And not like the super dark, depressing loop from the Amazon series. <laughs> uh, and the, so the keep the hopeful part of eighties in there. Uh, and yeah, you know, the City hopeful until Titan. we get nuked. Yeah, City of Titans from uh, Missing Worlds Media is the okay. uh, is the one that I uh, hope may actually turn into something someday. Which, which Some, might be City of Heroes. Yeah, may may we someday become a uh, a modern like Unreal Engine uh, capable nice. sort of City of Heroes thing. Uh, with I, I, I jumped back on it for a bit and I had fun for a while, but yeah, the see, problem is I, all of so those weird. games in the end were just procedurally generated random fights where you team up with. I had a team. And your team would go to that building and open it and go around the corner and then up the stairs, then over here, then over here. Then, yeah, you got the MacGuffin. Then you go do it again and again and again. Well, you and see, like, everyone I know, like all the people I know who are still City of Hero fans to this day are RPG, are like our role players. Our role so players, yeah. yeah. they aren't just they're doing not the just mission, doing they're the role playing. Because the grind got so boring. Yeah, yeah. No, using it as a place to role play a super character, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah playing the game anymore now no that's that's why that game still exists it's because all the role players wanted somewhere to role play their characters and a lot of, i see a lot of uh like rpg forums uh for yep. supers they are still using city of hero characters as their like art it's like i made this character well, yeah, in city yeah, of yeah. Heroes character as generator my, was as, pretty good as my uh, you know costume uh, etc all right um all right. moving on let's get another one rpg questions here we have another question from Roger Dodger Games. Do you play a lot of games with five or more players? How do they go? I fine. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the game. Um, I, I, there are certain games that work with groups that big. Um, we play quite a bit five. If Tori and Cat are over and Sean's over, Sean's played a lot of five player games with us. I th there's just some especially Euro games to go back to our older discussion on how I probably shouldn't use that term anymore. Some cube pusher economic uh, engine builder, those style of games get to be too much with five, but others sing at five, like scythe. I will happily play at five terraforming Mars. I'd prefer to stick with four. Um, I don't, I don't. And then party games is totally different. Five to me is like the sweet spot for most party games, like your minimum amount. Once you have five players, now I'm going to, like, let's break out the telestrations. Uh, Thrones of Valeria. Great with five. Though it's it's each play your own. It's better with six or four because you can play into teams, but it worked great at five. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm looking around the room for those <laughs> who aren't watching the video. I'm not remembering player counts. I, I don't know. I, like, five to me is fine. Three to me is fine. Um, more than five is where it gets a little rough. Um, usually once I get up to six players, depending on what we're doing, like if it's game night and we're all together to play together, I'll play six players. But usually once I get to six, like on a new year's night, and there's six of us, we'll split into two groups of three. Yeah. We did castle panic with five a couple weeks back. Yeah. Um, I think castle panic's fine with five. Actually, I didn't like it with six. I found, I found six was too much. Yeah. Well, and but again, as, as you said, when you hit six, it's a great way to start teaming up. And, you know, that's, yeah. that's the Once time I'm you drop six, back I down to, to two, uh, two sets of, of three rather than, uh, keep counting up. Uh, again, Telestrations behind you right now is one of those yep. exceptions where it can play the big numbers. Uh, right. I know you were a little concerned. You want at least five or it's just, it's too quick. Yeah. You only get two drawings, right? It's like, Oh, yay. I made it around. You need at least five for telestrations. Uh, Monstrosity. What's that? Uh, that Because I know that gets a little long when you get too many players in there. It, what happens with the Monstrosity is technically you're supposed to play so everyone's the investigator twice. Ooh, when you have too many people, time. that just, okay, that's a lot. Because <laughs> every round is a minimum of two minutes, 20 seconds. Minimum. Because that's the timed portion of the game. But in between is all the voting and talking and what do you think of this, right? That makes every round probably about five minutes each. And five minutes per player seems good. But when you're playing a rapid fire party game, once you got around the table once with eight players, you're looking at we've spent an hour, right? And then you're like, well, I know it's only 40 minutes. But, you know, between whatever, people getting up, grabbing a drink or anything. You're like, oh, do I really want to spend another hour just drawing silly monsters? Yeah. 
Um, like the colonists or not the colon caverna that I won't play a high player count. So it's a great game. It supports, I think seven or something ridiculous like that, but it's just too long. Um, the big four X games, I think are best at five or six, like eclipse twilight Imperium, but you know what you're in for, right? Like, you know, you're down for an <laughs> Epic game night. You, you don't want a quick game night. You want that to feel Epic. You want it to drag out. You want to be playing for a long time. Those are games I love playing at high player counts. Fair enough. So yeah, I don't know. To, to me, it's it's the one thing I like. I, I wish manufacturers won't do this because they think it'll limit sales. Or publishers won't do this. But like the board game geek recommended that tends to be pretty accurate as long as the game has enough votes because most gamers are pretty good at judging this was fun at five or it was too long. Um, and it just depends on the game. Some games are designed to play at six. Um, Battlestar Galactica, you want to play it at five. Once you play at six, it adds in a weird, funky rule about Cylons. Five is the perfect amount. I won't play that game at any count other than five. I'll only play Battlestar Galactica with five people at my table. Uh, Roger um, mentions the alpha is good at six. Yeah, the alpha was pretty good for, for higher player counts. Um, almost every game with a GM plays best at five. So like Star Wars Imperial Assault, I think is best at five. One player playing the Empire, four players playing the Hero. Descent Journeys in the Dark was the same thing. Um, uh, what's the even the, the the American Haunted Heartland game? What is the name of that stupid game? Not it's not stupid. Sorry. Oh, uh, Ghost Betwixt. Mm. You wanted four players and a DM. The classic Hero Quest five player game right there. One player plays. Uh, I'm going to say Zardoz. That's not the right name. I know. And Zardoz and everyone else plays Heroes. I, I like I said it, it depends on how the game's designed. If it's designed for five players, great. Now, if it's designed for four and they made it available to play for five, I think that's where it can be hard and, and sometimes go too long. Like to, to me, Terraforming Mars is one of the examples that once you get the five, I don't know what it is. Like you think adding one more player would add 45 minutes. For some reason with Terraforming Mars, it adds an hour and a half. I don't know why in that particular game. Um, Dominant Species, if I remember, is best at five. I, I like high player count games for games that support high player counts, I guess. Fair enough. I will say the sweet spot in general for most games seems to be three, whereas I usually play four. Most, most gaming I do is four player, uh, you know, me, D and the kids or me, D, Cat and Tori. Um, so playing just me, Sean and D, we've hammered through some games that seem like they should be longer and they're not with only three. So um but that's also that's play? also a level of, of the experience and and willingness to to sort of you know head down and head down and game with you know sipping coffee and, yeah. and playing through where it's it, not necessarily the most social and relaxing gaming that we've done at, you know when, when the three of us sit down and, and we've got some games to get done uh hughes and cues you want at least five if not more that game's better with 10 players how many games play 10 players <laughs> trick draw more with five, whatever the max is. five might be the max. I should have brought that one tonight. Um, today, earlier today, diamonds is, is one of the best, um, trick taking games that plays at five. That's actually why I love diamonds when it came out. Like I like heart spades. Diamonds is weird because when you play off suit, something funky happens, which involves these diamonds, which are actually how you win the game. But what I love about it is you can play five. I'm not at that time. I don't even know what there was. There, there must have been. I think Wizard might have played five or six, but like there weren't really hobby trick takers that played high player counts. But generally, I, I'll still say it though. Like if I get to six players, unless the goal is for those six people to hang out all night, like if it's public play event and we get two table, if we get six people showing up, I'm generally going to say, hey, why don't we split into two tables of three unless I can't teach both tables? Um, Psycho Babble uh, plays good with five. I found once you got past six, though, it just becomes too easy for one roll. Though, uh, I'll talk about that later. I guess that becomes more difficult when alcoholic beverages are involved. <laughs> yeah, no, Ryan's uh, right there. Co-op uh, co op games, when you, you get too high. Uh, one of the yep. big problems with most co-op games, I find, is, you know, in order to enable the co-op uh, at larger player counts, it's, you know, the, the bad guys act every time any player acts. Uh, so in some cases, by the time you get around to you, the evil, bad, you know, negative opposite you know, play game side of the game has done so much that you're already feeling watered down, <laughs> like uh, under the yeah. under the thumb before it even gets to be your turn. 
Uh, and so realistically, you know, three or four can really be a sweet spot for a lot of those co-ops. Yeah. And then same with the, um, even when you're not facing an adversary, the more players you have, the more quarterbacking is probably going to happen for someone. And it can obvious once you get up to five players, there's probably at least one player who didn't make a decision that entire game, <laughs> if not two or three. Yeah. Plus, the higher chance you're going to get people butting heads too. All right. Yeah, sweet spot. Um, the other one, like code names, all the code name games. Like Duet plays great with two, but I think it plays even better with four or five. Or I, what I like about code names with with five is you actually have three players on one side and and two on the other. Duet, but it's cooperative, so who cares? Right. It doesn't matter that your teams are unbalanced, which I actually like. Fair enough. Well, we got a follow-up question from Roger here. That isn't a follow-up, but I think it kind of melds in nicely with what we've just been okay. talking about here. Uh, and this came in from Discord earlier today, where he says, I like a lot of player inter- interaction and negotiation in games, mm-hmm. but some players don't enjoy any interaction. Yep. They enjoy solving a challenging puzzle more than trying to peer inside their opponent's heads. Uh, yep. How do you deal with diverse needs in a game group? I think that's true of any, whether it's um, negotiation, interaction, social deduction, dexterity, real time or not. Um, uh, you split people up like I, no one game is going to make everyone happy. And if your goal is to keep everyone interested and happy, the only thing you can really do at that point is compromise is you play the puzzle game first and then you play the social deduction game next or you play the the negotiation game. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a big enough game collection, you might be able to find games that cater to both groups. But I tend to find that when you try to do that, neither group ends up happy. Like they're like, oh, I like this part, but I didn't like this part. And it, they're better off just playing a game they fully like instead of one where they like part of. So that that's one of the things I've learned over the years running public play events that if someone's you know, you're like, oh, I like, I, I love worker placement games and figuring out a puzzle. And there's another group that like, I love trying to to play a hidden role and find a trader. Well, you mash those two together and you end up with Shadow Hunters, which was actually played at the barbershop bar. Doke was so happy. He finally got to play a full seven player game of Shadow Hunters. But for the players who like worker placement, they're like, oh, I didn't like all the, the, the lying and trying to just figure things out. And other players are like, well, I knew the answer but I couldn't collect the stuff to be able to give my answer. And I didn't like that. And I'm like, and I think you end up with both groups, not happy. Now the people who like social deduction and worker placement are like, this is awesome. They get a social deduction worker placement game. So I get it, but like, you can't make everyone happy. And I one of it goes to the stuff we've talked about before many, many times on the show about a session zero is if you're putting together a game group, right? Like you're, you're, you've decided you're going to get together on Wednesday nights at easy mode, which easy mode is long gone rest in peace, easy mode, and you're trying to make everyone happy, well, the best thing you can do at that point is find out what people want to play the next week and let them know, like, hey, I'm going to be bringing this. If you're not interested in that kind of game, you might want to bring your own game to play or not show up this week. Um, Stuff like that. Like, set expectations at the beginning of the night. And when you're looking at an event like that, your best thing you can do is let people know ahead of time what you're going to bring and let people know, like, like, hey, if this game's not for you, like, uh, people... You don't all have to play the same game together if you happen to be at the same event, right? Like split up, go play two player games. I I am really tempted to run a night at the barbershop bar where everyone just plays two player games. The problem is I can't clone myself to teach that many two player games at once, (laughs) but I kind of want to do like a two player only game night where everyone just plays two player games. There are some fantastic two player games. I brought a whole ton of them home from Origins that I never get to play and people don't get to play because they all want to play in the big six, seven, eight. Well, we've got 11 of us. And I'm like, well, I have Psycho Babble, but um, and I, I've, I don't even, th- I've got Telestration 12 players, and um, I'll teach you to play uh, 31 with the deck cards, but there's not much else I can give you at that player count. Code names, I can break that out, but like, we're not going to sit down and and build cities and manage our grain and resources with 11 players. It just, it doesn't exist. But at the same time, I think there's a a a real um, want to when you're out at a social night like the bar like the barbershop bar really is uh, it's a fantastic show social event besides the gaming yeah. aspect um to not you know isolate and 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 you know lock down we we've done that yeah. but there's been a lot of lockdowns now if you can get 11 people together in a group and and do something together that's an awesome opportunity uh and yeah. so i do see where the the love and the the want 
to play with those larger groups at an event specifically like that one comes from. And then I'm like, you know, come out to trivia night. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I like there's certain types of games that work for that, and there's certain kinds types of games that don't, right? Like, I don't know if if you're like, well, we we were gonna have to play ex- exploding kittens or 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 cards against humanity because it's all that'll play this account, and half the people are gonna like it, and and the rest are just kind of, I'm like, break up. Like, I I get it. But you know what? Two groups of six are gonna have more fun than your group of twelve. And no, you're not all playing together, but you know what? Next round, swap up six, uh, three people from each table, swap to the other table. Like there's ways to do it. And I think that's the key. Um, but it's that expectation, right? Talk to people, um, and, but try try to e- compromise in some way. Like I said, the, the big one for most groups when I'm running things is we're going to play this and then we're going to play this and realize, like talk about it. Be like, I know you don't love this kind of game, but they love it. So we're going to sit down and play this for their sake. And then maybe you'll find something you love in this game you missed before. And then we're going to play your game next and we're going to have these and they're going to check it out and see if they, they, they enjoy it more than they thought they would. And that way, both pe- both groups end up getting to play the games they enjoy. And like I said, trying to find that game that fits both groups doesn't always work as well as it. It sounds great in theory, but it, I find it doesn't always work all that well. If you can manage it, two separate game nights, separate your two, separate yeah. your groups and have more game nights. That's, <laughs> it's not a, a, an invalid, like, Yes, as adults, it seems like we never have enough time to do stuff like that. But that that's the suggestion I always tend to give to RPG groups, right? When they're like, well, I have one group that really wants to play Pathfinder or another group that wants to play this. So on one week, we play this and on another week, we play this. And I'm like, oh, you'd just be so much better to just split those players up. And on one week, get together with this group. And on that week, get together with that group. And they're like, but then I don't get the game every week. But I'm like, but you're not having fun every other week. So why not let the group that's having fun have more fun? And then when you do show up every other week, you get to have more fun. But people are it, it, people want to hang out with their friends. So yeah, it, it, gaming with friends can be complicated. Yep. To not hurt people's feelings <laughs> and everything, but it, it comes down to the same thing we always talk, say: talk about it. Right? It's it's sometimes it's an awkward, difficult conversation, and realize that someone's like, you know, I think you'll have more fun if you don't show up every week. Doesn't necessarily mean I don't like you. <laughs> don't come out every. I don't want to see you every week. No, you're trying to maximize the fun of everyone playing. Absolutely. All right. Uh, any other questions from the chat before we uh, wrap up what we've got going on tonight in the ask last opportunity before we dip into. There you the... go. Red Meeple Ryan is recommending Mega Civ if you need 11 players who want that empire building resource management game. Uh, Charles finished the game. I think it was yesterday or it was telling me about it. There are people into those games. Not for me. I know I haven't played it yet. I should give it a <laughs> shot. Maybe I'll love it. Um, I still need to sit down and play my first 18 XX with someone who can explain it to me. <laughs> instead of trying to read it from the box too. I think I'll like the 18 XX. I'm not sure if I'd like mega Civ. There, there are some locals that just adore those kind of games. Like, like they get together, they make a night of it. They order pizza. They, they rate beers and they play these massive civilization games. <laughs> Whereas we we tend to go for uh, quantity over uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, there are too many, t- are too many uh, times at when least we play. one of them would probably pay me to review one of those games and talk about it. And yeah, there are too many times uh, when we sit down and only play one one game in a night or or, or a weekend, like other than uh, um, Horizon Zero Dawn, like with and even that weekend we still played other games. Yeah, we still uh, played we just other played stuff. a lot of Horizon Zero Dawn as well. We need to do that again, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Although I like the game. I like the game well enough. Yeah, it was just unfortunate that we, that we discovered some uh, some problems if you didn't have some all, all of the content, you know, sort of thing. Oh, it's not even that. We, I, I've now talked to the designer. That card's completely useless. Oh, it really? Oh, it doesn't get it doesn't actually become useful later? Oh, God. None, nothing in any of the expansions yet. It's a mistake. It, it came from when they were going to do something and they didn't do a thing. Right. And left the card's card left over. There. Unfortunate. The dice were different. There, there were crit symbols on all of them at one time. Ah, uh, fair. They changed the dice, but never went back to remove the symbols from certain cards. Fair enough. Um, yeah, that, I don't remember when that came up. I was doing, I was doing some looking up something about the game. Do we want to hand in uh, nail that one last question, or should we just move on to our? Copy? I feel like we're a little short tonight but that's fine we can go we i got, got lots going of games yeah we got a lot about. going on after so yeah we we got lots of gameplays to talk about so this, no other questions which is cool 
Well, that's it for tonight's live Q&A. Thank you, everyone, for all the great, great questions. Yeah, it's always fun doing one of these. It's kind of relaxing, at least for this part of the show. The after work sucks, but you know what? This part's enjoyable. Thank you, everyone who sent in questions. I greatly appreciate it, as usual. Um, I am going to call it one thing I missed. Actually, Red Maple Ryan pointed out there is now a journaling version of Star Trek Adventures, which I just think is cool. So Star Trek Adventures from Modifius, I think it is. The big Star Trek role-playing game that's out now now has a play, way to play solo. And um, Lord of the Rings did that as well. Sorry, The One Ring did that as well. Free League put out... Um, I, I, I want to call it the Aragorn play, but the Rangers mode or something like that. A way to play that solo. So that was cool. Um, sorry if uh, we didn't interact with everything that was said in the chat, but I do thank you for the questions. Uh, speaking of questions, if you have a question for us, you can hit us up with an email, questions at tabletopbellhop.com, or head over to the blog and click on Ask the Bellhop. 